Stay tuned on today's podcast. We've got Fraser Forstar. Find out what Lionel Messi said about him. Uh, who's his character reference at Tottenham? Uh, we have an Elton John 11. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast. Uh, I've got Chris Stark and uh, the notorious SID with me as usual. We've got a very special guest on today. Mm-hmm. We go down to a secret location. Yeah. Um, more of that very soon. Mm-hmm. But how have you been? I'm having a, a little bit of drama in my relationship since... Um, so how's it going? Because on Instagram... Um, <laughs> is it blown up? Yeah, yeah. I think she's just a bit weirded <laughs> out by the whole thing. So you forget how many people listen to this podcast, don't you? <laughs> so basically, we, we said... I can't remember if this was on the last podcast, the one before, um, but I was saying whenever I put up a picture of me and my wife on Instagram, which is rare, partly because of this reason... <laughs> I get a lot of comments underneath from people going, oh, you're punching, you're punching. Mm. And Crouchy, you very kindly said that you relate to this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so so <laughs> p- my argument was, okay, I agree with that, but if you think that I'm punching, why not help me balance the books a bit? You know, like, we can all say I'm punching, mm. but you don't need to write a message underneath saying I'm punching. Like, what would be helpful is if you can write underneath, you know, she's punching yeah. because then it will make her realise how lucky she is. Um, it's also about being a wingman. It's like, it's kind of like giving you a leg up, you know, like, let's let's cut Christmas slack. So the podcast came out and I started seeing a few of these float in. And I was got? thinking, oh God, I'm, I'm waiting for the text. And then I thought what would be interesting is if i just put up a picture of me and my wife as well just to mm. just to really sort of i don't know what i was to thinking cement it. the sport of it maybe <laughs> and the comments i mean even as i open up my phone right now the latest comment my wife called this is from someone called jay my wife calls out chris's name in bed and you know what i'm okay with it i as- i aspire to be half the man that chris is <laughs> <laughs> the problem is no one's gone subtle <laughs> like oh, he's, he's got it all in there he's a good bloke that Chris or anything like yeah, that yeah. it's all what else have we got some Mate, bounces there I, I... on one particular photo here there's n- over 900 comments <laughs> <laughs> 900 comments <laughs> got some traction <laughs> it's pretty Very much everyone strange. everyone doing she's caught herself a stallion yeah <laughs> <laughs> look at this one from Gavin here cool how she got him <laughs> To be fair, that was kind of that was kind of the that idea, was the brief, right? Wasn't it? It was... But what about this one from Insta Sam? What a specimen <laughs> sent to live amongst us by the Greek gods themselves <laughs> to demonstrate true beauty. An Adonis. <laughs> An Adonis. <laughs> There's wow. so many. So what has the missus said? Well, so so the comments started. There must be a filter on that. No one can look that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this one from Hazard. That looks like a man who can do more than five pancakes. Lucky, Lucky lady. lady. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What my missus is saying, Sid, is um, I think she's just a bit confused about the situation yes, because yeah. I also don't want to say, like I, we had a massive discussion on the podcast about the fact that I'm clearly punching because that's the whole point of this, right? Is to make her think that she's punching a little bit. Mm. Um, so what I've just said is, oh, I just thought it was cute to put up a picture of us and, um, you know, the lads have noticed that I've put up a couple of pictures of me and my wife and it was just a discussion from there. This is not going to stop, is it? It's going to no, carry on. I'm into it. I'm, I'm here for it. Up now, it's... Wow. What about this one? Fly me. Carlsberg don't do husbands, but if they did... <laughs> His barbecue must be massive. His barbecue must be massive. <laughs> So all little stuff. So just it's worked. Yeah, I just yeah. want to say thank you. Very just much. Say a big thank you to the listeners. Look at what well, I'll do. One more, and then that's it. This this is from Fernando. Bloody hell! You can tell he knows his way around some meat. <laughs> Wouldn't mind a dry rub treatment from him. The lady has done very well for herself. <laughs> so anyway, that's where uh, that's what's been going on with me of late. Yeah, I've got a couple of messages here. One from Will. Uh, he says, uh, "I was recently sp- I recently spotted crouching behind the wheel at the traffic lights." <laughs> <laughs> I can confirm he had two hands on the wheel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Told you. It rumbles on this, well, doesn't it? Well, it does rumble on, yeah. Well, just touching on that message from Will, um, we, we're struggling to get in touch with uh, Peter J. Crouch, um, driving instructor from Slough. Mm. Um, don't know if he exists or what. It's, mm. it's hard to get hold of. Um, but what I have done is organise uh, a day for us 
a day out somewhere driving. Okay. So we can put this to bed once and for all. This sounds exciting. Interesting. Who's the who's the shittest driver that you've ever played with? No one's ever asked me that. <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky. Joe, Joe Coles. Was he bad? Is he a bad driver? Oh, yeah. Is he? Yeah. There was a story that week, wasn't there? Um, <laughs> the guys at TNT were saying it, that he, f- he got lost, did an interview with someone in the car with the sat nav on. <laughs> <laughs> did. They're following behind and he got lost. He got lost? <laughs> yeah. yeah, with the sat nav, yeah. That's true. Uh, yeah, bad drivers. Um, don't know. It's a tricky one. Yeah. yeah. You can swerve that one, aren't you, boys? Yeah. yeah. All right, should we play this Fraser Forster mm. chat? Let's do it. Yeah, enjoy. Right, Fraser, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Mate, it's, a, it's an absolute privilege to have you. Uh, we've had we've got a theme with goalkeepers yeah. on this pod, haven't we? Yeah, I'd like we to had think... some good ones. We had some quite a few. I think we've sort of it's an interesting one because Crouchy's dead against you guys as a trade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Straight in. <laughs> Don't hate you. It's better than the violence. That's not true. That isn't true. Well, you're very anti goalkeeper. Uh, uh, well, no, I just I just feel that you are very different to the rest of the footballing world. I feel like you do, you like train on your own, you know, you do your own gym work and that. Are you still like getting here ridiculously early and doing gym stuff? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Not, as, not as early as I used to, like yeah. when I was a bit younger. Mm. But yeah, we're, you've got to be different to be a keeper, I think, mm. to be fair. So, but yeah, most of us are a bit weird. Slightly different. Yeah. Different yeah. is the key. But yeah. Do you think, because um, you listen to the podcast a bit, yeah, don't you? Yeah. Right. Um, do you feel that goalkeepers aren't given the same respect as some other goal, um, some other playing positions like Crouchy, like strikers? Do you feel that there is a prejudice against goalkeepers that comes with football? A little bit, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I think it's hard as well because obviously a lot, a lot of people haven't played in goal. Mm. So then the perception from some people will be like, oh, just save it. Or like, do you know what I mean? Or... I don't know. But we are different. Like, you have got to be different and it's very much a solo position. But I think it's hard because obviously a lot of people haven't played in goal and don't necessarily mm, no, fully get the position. Mm. But yeah. like, it's like me with a striker. I couldn't really say... I, I would say it, but I couldn't be like, just kick it in the goal. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, it is different. Yeah, but when they score, they can go off <clears> celebrating. You know, they get two minutes to, to kind of have everyone celebrating around them. You pull off an amazing save... Really, you just got to get straight on with it. Do you think there should be something in the game that allows... Because you've pulled up some <laughs> worldy saves. Do you think you should be given a chance to celebrate in that moment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just stop the game. Let me run over there. Doing, like, if you, I, let me, let I me go and do a Klinsman. I didn't say that. <laughs> but I said, it, it, like, when you save a pen, you should be allowed, like, a knee slide. Yeah. yeah. At that time. Definitely. Yeah. What would your celebration be? Oh, what question? Uh, oh, backflip. Wow! <laughs> no I wasn't expecting chance. that. Have you got, <laughs> no. you got one? No, absolutely no chance. <laughs> um, be out for six months if I did that. <clears throat> um, I don't know. Whenever, whenever keepers do a oh. celebration, especially from a pen celebration, it either goes out for a corner, doesn't it, straight away, or um, it gets it, it comes ricochets out and it's cleared. So you don't really get a chance to celebrate. But when they do, it's an aggressive celebration, isn't it? It's like a Fuck it, come on! <laughs> like you're, and you're red patting people, you're pushing. <clears throat> Most of these big men here getting over um, someone. Come on! Mm. Fuck it! Like they be, be <laughs> spitting dribbles. Like, they be fucking. Like, they be headlocks going on. It's always that. Like, it's always like an aggressive celebration. Mm. And then you see them like it's gone out for a corner. Yeah. And you just see them like pushing defenders <laughs> away. Being like, go on, lads, like, let's not concede. So, yeah, it's always the way it's it always the shouting at their defences. Um, do you know what? I want to dig down into your career because obviously, so you started you started at Newcastle, right? Yeah. Is that where you came through? Yeah, so I signed there when I was 17. So I was quite late into it. And then, yeah, so I joined the academy at 17 and then had a few years there, went out on loan. And... Who would you have been under? Was Shay Given? Yeah, Shea Steve was Harper. there, Steve Harper, yeah. two top lads. Mm. Um, Pavelson, Shet was there for a bit. So, yeah, yeah. but like Shay and Harps were... 
brilliant with me. Yeah, uh, and did you did you think obviously it was hard to dislodge kind of, and and then you moved on to sell it because you had a couple of loans and then and then went to sell it. Yeah, I mean, obviously Shay at the time like top top keeper. Harps was a top keeper as well. Yeah, and obviously Newcastle's big club. It's hard to go from playing reserve team football to are oh, you Newcastle number one? So. I think naturally just went out on loan a couple of times and then obviously the opportunity came up to go to Celtic and then um, mm. went there. So did a couple of years on loan there and then signed permanently. It always feels like mm. there, fan-wise, mm. Newcastle and, mm. and Celtic as well, like it's incredible fan bases. Mm. Oh, yeah. Like Newcastle's amazing. Um, like everyone knows what Newcastle's about. Obviously, he's everyone in Newcastle goes to the football on a Saturday. Mm. Like, town's, like, dead because everyone's at the football. And then, yeah, obviously Celtic. I mean, it's just incredible. Like, it's a worldwide fan base with yeah. both clubs. Yeah. Very passionate. I saw an amazing video. Um, are you boys familiar with the Thai Tims? <laughs> Okay. Tell you what we is. This is this is great. I can't believe you've dragged this out. <laughs> so the Thai Tims mm. are obviously a fan base out in Thailand, and mm. they worship this man. Oh really? <laughs> so are you? Familiar? Well, like, so are, 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 are you? Before you say Newcastle, <laughs> sorry, it's just Fraser. I think no, in the main, not just me. Well, <laughs> not all the players have a song written for them. Wow. Do you song. want to see a little <laughs> clip of the song? Oh, well, 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 I'll show you. I've got to show you it. <laughs> Hang on. Well, I've got so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get your reaction to this. So, this is the song <laughs> Fraser Forster by the Thai Tims. Are they wearing gloves in the back line there? <laughs> oh, they've all got gloves on. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell you the chorus in case you can't hear it very well. For our team. <laughs> Big man where he's got huge hands like a frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> Dives with all like a cat. How amazing That's is that? That's quite catchy. Yeah. So I've seen it's the a teacher there. So it's, like a, it's a group of children, right? And the teacher is playing guitar. And they all what, look like in Celtic kits. So yeah, at least... so I think it was set up by a Celtic fan. Mm. And then he's basically got them fully support in Celtic. Fair and play. Well nah, it's amazing. And then the song yeah. was born. Yeah. Big hands like a frying pan. One. Wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's incredible. The number of people who come up to me and say, oh, big hands like a frying pan. Seriously. <laughs> you know, like just randomly. Like, like, that yeah. is amazing. So I imagine that blew up a bit, did it? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it. I don't think, I think you're right. It's one of those that some people may have seen. It never got to number one so far. Um, but we're obviously putting it out on this podcast now. <laughs> and we've got a habit of making things go a bit ridiculous. So... With your blessing, we can give it another go if you oh, want. Give it a go, yeah. Mm. Nah, it's a great song. Yeah, awesome, <laughs> awesome. You know, so what did you make of your time up there? Like, Celtic as, as a as a team, obviously, the fan base, but living up there as well, did you did you enjoy it? Yeah, I loved it. Um, like, fantastic city. And then, just to be a part of that club, I mm. think people down south probably don't really appreciate the size of it mm. and how, yeah. how big it is. Um, but no, it's amazing. I think, you know, your whole life, as soon as you like go into Glasgow or Scotland, like football just consumes mm. your life because everywhere you go, people stop to talk to you. Um, obviously the rivalry as well with Rangers. Um, so like if you win, you've got mm. the bragging rights for the next month. Mm. If you lose, you don't want to go anywhere. Don't want to go for dinner. Don't want to show your face. Um, but just an incredible club, like mm. massive club. Fans are amazing. Um, so it was just so special to play there. Yeah, and obviously playing the Champions League as well as like iconic matches like the Barcelona match, for instance. Like, what was that oh, like? Can we break that down? <laughs> that whole experience from how amazing the crowd was before that game to what some people describe as the greatest goalkeeping performance of all time. <laughs> <laughs> you um, laugh, but it was yeah. must have been up there, mm. right? Ah, oh, I mean. Just that, like, I mean, obviously that game is one of however many Champions League games we played, but. Um, no, just Champions League nights in general there are just so special. Um, like the atmosphere is incredible and I'd say for anyone, if you can go to one game, I'd go to Celtic Park on a Champions League night. 
But then, yeah, obviously, I think we played Barcelona away two weeks before and we lost in the last minute. But I think we took so much confidence from that mm. and we were just like, oh, we can beat anyone at Celtic Park. Yes. And like we had such a good dressing room and like the atmosphere and the lads were so good. And then like obviously that night kind of everything just came together. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And um, Messi, ah, Messi described <laughs> you as um, not human. He actually used those words. He was a keeper, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Knows me well. <laughs> is, it, is it true that after that, there was at least discussions with Barcelona or the idea that they were trying to bring you in? Yeah, I kept, I kept DMing them. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, obviously I've seen those quotes and stuff and I, don't know, I never got that far down the line, I don't think so. Um, but obviously, like when someone like that says those kind of things about you, um, you know, it means a lot and shows you did the right thing for a change. Mm. Can you imagine Messi <laughs> describing your I don't, think, I don't think I've heard Messi talk about many players. No. Like, ever. You know what I mean? So that is an unbelievable honour for him to single you out for praise. Yeah, I mean, incredible. I mean, to have someone like that say those things about you, yeah, mm. obviously means means the world and obviously meant a lot. Obviously, it was a fantastic night and, um, you know, everyone keeps talking to me about that and, um, yeah, you know, it's obviously incredible, but I don't know. Your it's what you do. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> your career just keeps as, going. And, oh. As Roy King says, <clears throat> just, it's your job. You're doing your job. <laughs> 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 What's it, like, what you said, like, uh, you know, it, it's it, it's a kind of a fishbowl scenario up there, isn't it? When it's good, it's good. And obviously when it's bad, it's... But you got to take, mm. you know, the shit with it, I suppose. But you were in a good period, That's right? That's what I was going to yeah. say, yeah. Yeah, we kind of... I think the first year we were there, like, we didn't win the league... And that was a real kind of eye opener to like when things aren't going well, or like and how small the margins are between success and failure, and um, that's the big thing up there. Like you can't even if you draw a game, it's seen as like the worst thing. Whereas obviously when you come down south, it's a bit different and stuff. Whereas there, you have to win every week, and as soon as you play and finish your game, you see what the score was in the other mm. game, and you know like the whole seasons like the kind of intensity is like non-stop so I think um, but like you say even like around town like yeah. if it's going well it's great yeah. but if it's not you're like I'm not going to have a dinner <laughs> don't want to go anywhere it, don't is see it anyone. that bad really yeah like you just feel like you can't kind of get a breather from yeah. it um, mm. but equally the flip side is like yeah. it's great pressure to have and you're playing an amazing club and the opportunity to play Champions League football and win stuff and you know, that's what you play yeah, football for. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. But you don't realise the enormity of it. Like I've, mm. I've b bizarrely been through Glasgow Airport with Chris Sutton, right? And, um, you know, Chris Sutton, you know, obviously had an incredible career, but like up there, it's, it's just, it's just, it's just mm. different, isn't it? Like, and, and I, I've had it a lot in my life where people come over and want a picture. I absolutely, no one wanted to come near me because I was next to Chris Sutton. And like, just how kind of mad... It is up there. Do you still have a lot of Celtic fans? Like, because it's global Celtic, yeah. right? It's you know, if you're in America, you mm. could be in Boston, New York. You know, there's Celtic fans everywhere. Yeah. Do you get that when you're on holiday, or do you still get it? Yeah, for certain. I think, like you say, like there's Celtic fans everywhere. Like you go on holiday Dubai, mm. and then people are over harm oh, a Celtic fan, mm. and like they'll be chatting to you, or go New York and. You know, you wander past like an Irish bar, and then straight away it's like, "Oh, Celtic fan!" Yeah, but like everywhere you go, like there's just Celtic fans. Like it's such a worldwide kind of mm. institution, and but like you say there, like they just love you for the fact you've played for Celtic, mm. and you know, like you can be with whoever, and they'll come straight to you because mm. like you've been a Celtic player, and um, you know, and they'll chat to you about Barcelona or whatever, mm. and you know, it just means the world to them. Yeah, absolutely amazing. So then you go to Southampton, but I was looking through the, the, the players you played with at Southampton. Mm. Like, that was a that was a top side. Like, when you had, the, obviously, Mane. Yeah. I was thinking of Pella. Um, you know, maybe probably... Was Van Dyke there when yeah, you were there? Yeah, yeah. Van Dyke. The Lana. You know, the players, the Lana. I just, I just missed out on the Lana. He right. left the summer I went in. Um, but obviously played with him in England and stuff. Um, but yeah, we when I first went to Southampton, kind of the first two years, we built... Just Unbelievable period, team. wouldn't it? Yeah. Obviously, I played with Virgil at Celtic, mm. and I think, <clears throat> I think on his first day, he's coming at Celtic and trained, and then sessions finished. Neil Lennon's just pulled them, and been like, "Don't think you're going to be here very long. <laughs> really, just, just enjoy it." 
Really? Yeah, like just incredible. Like so good. Oh. And he to train with every day. We like he, he was oh, he was one of the best. Unbelievable. Yeah, really. And then obviously got to Southampton, and I remember Kuman coming straight up to me. I think maybe one year in, he was like, "What do you think of Virgil?" I was like, "Top player." And then we ended up signing him. <clears throat> so uh, no, but we had an incredible team at that period, and Kuman was fantastic with us and the kind of football we played and where we finished mm. in the league, you know, it's something really kind of special for Southampton and we were absolutely flying. I always think that's an interesting uh, sort of situation when you have to be a reference for a player mm. uh, in, in a transfer. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what transfers you boys have been involved in when mm. they've asked for, you know, just a character, character assessment, a yeah. character reference, yeah. yeah. It happens a lot, it happens a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah it does happen well, a lot. I even heard Sid's on the <clears throat> phone to a golf club earlier giving a reference for a, for someone <laughs> that he was uh, trying to get in. Was he? Just, yeah, decent name. Oh, yeah. Big name, <laughs> yeah. <isn't it>? <laughs> <laughs> Sign the big name. <laughs> but I just like this idea that a manager can come up and ask for a player of that calibre as well. You could shithouse him there if you wanted. <laughs> just like ruin, you could have ruined his career yeah, in that moment. Have. Nah. Yeah, but then I, think, <laughs> oh, I reckon he would have him. rose to the top. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think he would have been fine. Yeah. Can you imagine if he had gone like, uh, to Ronald Koeman? Nice. No, he's <laughs> crap. It's, it's overhype. <laughs> Yeah, that, but that'd be like a, that, great, a great period for Southampton. Oh, like, incredible. Like you say, the players we had and yeah. like Morgan Schneidlin, Toby Alder. Oh, yeah. like, Everyone just moved on, didn't they? Like, who's, yeah. the, who's the one that surprised you? I don't know who was like, like Mane, for instance, like absolute class act. But did you see, because I remember at the time everyone said it was, it was a bit overpriced mm. for Liverpool. Obviously, looking back with hindsight, <laughs> he's worth, you know, yeah, yeah. quadruple weight, you know. Um, but, he kicked on. I think when he went to Liverpool, he kicked, kicked on, on to again. another level. Yeah. Um, you know, I think Did you think he had that level, though, when you when he was at Southampton? He, when he first came in, he was a bit kind of raw and mm. he could do anything. And it was one of them where you weren't sure what he could do. Mm. But then he would just do something incredible. And you were like... But um, I don't know, he just kicked on so much. I think going into that team at Liverpool and playing mm. with the pl- players he played with and obviously working with Klopp. I think he just kicked on more than anyone thought he would, but um, like incredible talent and mm. you know, a good lad as well. And but like you say, we had such such a good group there, and then yeah. we kind of lost our way after that because we mm. kind of lost that core. Um, well, you got badly <clears throat> injured, didn't you? Was that what was that? So, yeah, you know, I, uh, was that a break? No, nah, ruptured my patella tendon. So okay, talk, talk to me in layman's terms. Uh, which disaster is it? Um, yeah, so basically, like, obviously your tendon holds your kneecap where it is. So it was literally just clearing a back pass under pressure. And I've just felt like almost like an elastic band, like twang. And I've just felt like my kneecap Oof. pop up into a thigh. And then I had 20 seconds of, like, pain. And then I felt, like, fine. So by the time the physio has <laughs> got on, like, I'm like, the pain's kind of stopped. But I'm looking at my knee, though. My knee doesn't really look right because my kneecap was sitting a couple of inches higher than it should. So, like, I'm still on the floor, and he's, like, assessing your knees. And I'm like, he's like, yeah, get the stretcher. And I'm like, nah, I think I can play on here. <laughs> really? <laughs> but, like, just because I had no pain. But ultimately, like, the tendon's what bends and straightens your leg. And so I had no kind of feeling in my quad, nothing. So then... But at the time as well, like by the time I'd gone off and whatever, <clears throat> it's obviously like, oh, you've done your patella tendon. Um, didn't really know anyone who had done it. So it was a bit like, fuck no, like, I think there was one person who the surgeon said had done it and he retired from it. So we were a bit like... So you're thinking the worst at that yeah, point. Yeah, because even like you're chatting to the medical staff at the club and they're like, not really sure who you should go and see and what cool. surgeon I didn't realise it was that rare because it feels like it shouldn't be that rare really like you no. think about knees all the time players are always doing their knees but then like. since obviously like the cruciate's the main one mm. but then since I've done mine weirdly there seems to have been you know three or four lads who mm. and then you all end up speaking to each other well you're the you're yeah. now the you're, you're the reference to this injury aren't <laughs> you you're the, you're it, the yeah. case yeah, yeah do well, you, know you I mean? didn't just come back from it you had you know, a huge Chumbawamba. Mm. Uh, admittedly, one of the, I think, if not your first game, was a, a win against Watford, which obviously, you know, frustrating from my point of view. But then you went, you kept a clean sheet for mm. six games after that. Yeah, right? just, I don't know, it was a perfect kind of return. But like, I'd done the rehab 
And then I played, I think, one 23s game. And then, then we had Martin Stecklenburg on loan and he was kind of feeling as hammy. And then all of a sudden it was like, are oh, you playing tomorrow? And I couldn't have felt less ready to play. Like, I was just like, yeah, I'll give it my best. Do you know what I mean? But like, went out, clean sheet. And then we just went on this run where, and obviously as the games tick by, like more and more lads in the team are like, let's not concede. Mm. And like everyone else buys in. Mm. And then like, then we played Arsenal away and we got peppered. Um, yeah, I made a load of saves. Like, Prosey cleared one off the line. So he'll always be like, oh, I've got your record. It's like, <laughs> 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 I like all of this, but no, nah, it's like the perfect return after like an injury mm. like that, where you're kind of questioning how am I going to come back from it. And, mm. and that, how it. hard was it? Like, how, how long were you out mm. for? So I was out for 10 months in total. And then, like, the surgery was like a bit horrible. Like, mm. So after that, it was a bit hard. Like the first kind of six weeks, you're locked out in an Ebro straight. Like, just such a slow mm. kind of return. Um, but then it gets easier as you get closer to coming back and stuff. Mm. And um, But even like then, like, I've never had the same feeling in my quad since really? and stuff like that. And Your so kneecap like looks quad. like it's in the right place, though. Oh, it's no, back in the right it's, place. It's, so that's, yeah. good. that's a good start. Anyway. That's, so, that's, that's progress. <laughs> <laughs> who was, who was the manager when, that, when you'd done that? So I did it when Kuman was manager. Right. And then, um, so I did it in my, towards the end of my first year at Southampton. Yeah. And then I was out for kind of from March till kind of January time. Came back in the January and then had another six months and then Kuman left. Yeah. But you didn't feel ready. Wait, it's interesting that because, you know, sometimes from a fan's point of view, you can see players that are out injured and you think, just get on, you know, just get out there. Mm. Do you think that, was that down to the manager that just sort of encouraged you, even though you didn't necessarily think that you were quite right to get back to to actually, no, you know, not, just get you out there and, and give it a really. go? I think kind of anyone who's kind of had a big injury, um, you kind of need a couple of games or... I just felt like I hadn't been in many kind of situations really, like not testing the knee, but just... I don't know, you feel like you need to kind of tick off that final stage of the rehab and then you're mm. like, right, I'm good to go. Like, you need a good chunk of training and stuff before you feel kind of ready to go into, like, a Premier League game. Mm. And then it was literally just like, yeah, you're playing tomorrow. <laughs> and I was like, ah, fuck it, like, just go and do it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, Yeah, it's good in a way, though, isn't it? Because <laughs> it takes all the thinking. Like, if you'd have known you'd have been playing maybe at the start of the week, it would have been a different yeah, yeah, mindset yeah. Where, if, where if just get on with it, do it. You've come out there running, gone. That wasn't too bad. That it was yeah. it good. I'm good that I'm back. Mm. Then you just kick on again. Yeah. So it's the way it worked out works out perfectly. Yeah. And then obviously we went on a great run, and um, like I think broke the record for clean sheets at Southampton. Um, has that been has that been beaten since? Do you know? You kept on. I'm not sure. One? To be fair, so I'm sure someone will let us know. Yeah. 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 None of us all know. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> Surprised you don't. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there was a, there was a stat going up. Was it you didn't concede a goal in the League Cup final, right? And leading up to the League Cup final. Yeah. Did, didn't concede. Yeah. Didn't concede. Yeah. That's an unbelievable record, isn't it? Yeah. First team in history. I read it out. First team in history to reach the League Cup final without conceding a goal in 2017. Yeah. The whole didn't, way through. Didn't, didn't even know that. Yeah. yeah. That's what we do here. We're yeah. all about stats. <laughs> 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 well less so now but yeah. Yeah, we were at one point um, <laughs> <laughs> now I want to quickly touch yeah. on, on your on your England career like how do you yeah. how do you look at that yeah it's hard when you look at England I think because obviously Harty was kind of England's number one yeah and then we had obviously like Ben Foster and then I kind of came in as the third um, and it was quite at that time there was kind of quite a kind of changeover of keepers and stuff and then it got to the point where kind of Harty kind of didn't go and then I'm a bit like but then we had like younger keepers coming through as well and it was quite a kind of transition but I don't know I, obviously I'm very proud to have played for my country and yeah. stuff um, but equally I'm a bit wish I could have done a bit more See how does that how does that feel like because obviously even with my England career I always knew like Wayne Rooney and Mike Owen would play and then I was, as long as I was the best of the ones behind them, I'll get games. Yeah. But, you know, like, say, when, for instance, if you're number three, you know really you're not going to yeah. get games. So how, how do you get, how do you, 
how's your mindset when you go away with England? I mean, it's it's great going away. Yeah. Like, you want to go and mm. you're training with the top lads in English football. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's great. And then, but it's hard, I think, as well, because mm. say you're going on a camp and it's two competitive games. You're like, oh, I'm not going to play here. But obviously you just want to go train well and mm. do the best you can because mm. that's all you can do ultimately. Um, whereas obviously when I was in, there was still like friendlies. So if you got away and there's a friendly game, you're thinking, oh, I could get a game here. Mm. And then that's the frustrating one, I think, if you go and then you don't play. But um, it's just hard. I think international football's hard because obviously manager needs to win first and foremost. And then it's not just about giving out caps mm. as well. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's tough. I think the frustrating thing was the two tournaments I went to where you know, we kind of, we underachieved and mm. should have done better. Um, obviously Brazil and then the Euros. So I think that was the frustrating thing when mm. you go away as a squad and then don't kind of go as far as you should. Mm. You talk about managers there and training. How different from when you started out at Newcastle, even going, still going now, how different has it been the evolving of the goalkeeper role in terms of playing out from the back, using your feet? Obviously some managers do it some managers don't do it some for now we'll obviously remember the back end of our careers goalkeepers were certainly involved in training much more in terms of the keep ball sessions and um and the possessions is that is that still evolving yeah for sure i think you know more and more is demanded of you as a keeper now so even like training now like we'll be involved in the possessions yeah. uh, you might be like an end man and stuff but you're in most of the possessions and you know you just got to be better with your feet and that's the kind of requirement and then you either do it or you don't yeah. like you look at the manager here and how he wants to play you know it's all about playing out from the back and yeah so you either buy into that and yeah. learn to do it or you know they'll go and find someone else so mm. ultimately but it's whatever the manager like ultimately if he wants to play from the back then you've just got to find a way to do it I it's think. crazy though isn't it like, even look at goal kicks mm. now like the centre half will take it and pass it to you, sort of to you that's three yards away, and then he'll just sort of make a movement. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right, can, can you just Man. talk me through that? Like, I, don't, <laughs> I, just, I don't really understand this. <laughs> I used to love it, right? When because because I knew I'd be getting the ball like yeah. off the keeper. So like instead of you getting it five mm. yards away, you get it I mean. sixty yards away, and <laughs> I'd either be on my chest or like on my head. Do you know what I mean? And I'd I knew it was like that was my time to shine. Yeah. <laughs> Peter, Peter, pen stars. I'd be going if I was playing yeah. in this day and age. About pen stars back in the day, if your goalkeeper physically couldn't kick it far enough, mm. as in yeah, our goalkeeper was a bit of a weakling, you'd yeah. have the defender. Take it. That's Always. why they were. That, that's yeah. why they were taking Biggest it. kick in the team. <laughs> came back and launched it up the pitch. <laughs> Our football's changed, eh? But that's the thing. Like when I started in Newcastle, like I had Big Sam kind of mm -hmm. as one of the manager, managers there, and you can say what's right, what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Do you know the game's moved on a lot? Mm -hmm. But like obviously, his thing was well, you're more likely to score if the ball's in their heart. Yeah. So yeah. just get it up there. <laughs> yeah. And then get the ball in the box. Whereas, mm. you know, like, and obviously the, there is a bit more risk played out from the back. and mm. But I feel like people have kind of bought into that now where I think they'd rather see their team play out from the back and except you might get caught once and give away a poor goal or whatever. But, um, you know, to see good football or that kind of football. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And so obviously, when, uh, how does Tottenham come about when you come, you come to Tottenham? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, my contract was finishing at Southampton, mm. and then who put in a reference for you? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> Trying to think, uh, who do you reckon it was? Obviously, I, I knew a few lads here, like Harry and mm. Eric, when I came, and people like that. So I don't even know if they got asked. Like, I'm not mm. not asked oh, yeah. about. I think they probably saw me in training and went, mm. "No, nah, we didn't recommend it." <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, I, honestly, just agent rang me up one day, and I was like, "Yeah, I've sorted you next." Next thing, uh, Tottenham. So I was buzzing. Mm, um, nice, mm. Like, didn't tell me anything about it in the build up to it happening. He just rang me up and was like, Yeah, sorted of you for next year. Tottenham. Yeah. And then. And you join it? Oh, I absolutely love it. Yeah. Obviously, um, you know, last season was a tough season, um, kind of for everyone at the club. Yeah. And, you know, Conte worked as hard. Yeah. And then. Uh, was it hard? <clears throat> I've heard about his oh. sessions. Like, it, Fitness regimes incredible, and really. Yeah, even for goalkeepers. Yeah, like 
got worked so hard. Mm. I can't even put into words. I think like you guys will have seen the clips of the lads running in mm. Korea. Yeah. And um, yeah, just insane. Like, but that's what it's about. It's about working you hard mm. and getting the best out of you. And, um, you know, like wait, the lads put in like a huge shift. Mm. And then, um, I mean, obviously I came in and I got off to a great start because I went to, we went South Korea on pre-season, got there. I'm thinking, right, train well in press. Got COVID. <laughs> so me and Beast both got COVID mm. and we just sat in our hotel rooms for 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> really? But honestly, like we would be in our room and I like, couldn't leave the room. Oh. And you'd hear the lads get up to go to train and at like oh. eight in the morning and I'd go train. And then like, I'd be sat there going like, because I'd bring your food to your room when How frustrating like, is it? I mean, because I suppose you didn't, did you not feel, mm -hmm. you didn't feel awful, or did nah, you? Nah, I felt fine. You felt fine, but oh. you just couldn't train. Yeah, so it was the first time I had COVID and then I was just sat in my hotel room. What did you like, do to pass the time? <sighs> it's not a loaded question. It's just, I'm just interested because you're not on social media. No, nah, so, not really. I turn pro with social media. But I, uh, to pass the time, like I ended up, to be fair, I ended up almost switching back to English time. So then, like, I could chat to my mates and people back home. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, just... You to do what you got to do, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, literally, like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, we all had that weird COVID time, didn't we? Yeah, those we did, yeah. We weren't, weren't all wanking, though, were we? <laughs> 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 We've learned, learned, yeah, learned, learned a lot about your COVID time. Um, <laughs> but uh, that right took then. a turn, didn't it? Big Ange, uh, let's talk. Uh, yeah, let's move on to Big Ange. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, I, when I was at, when I was at Spurs, we didn't, you know, the training ground is like unbelievable, right? The stadium is unbelievable. Like they've built this kind of infrastructure around a football club now, but it feels like the managers kind of fits the bill now as well, and it's all kind of moving in the right direction. Yeah, massively. I think you know, obviously, you know, they're desperate for success, mm. and you know, like you say, the stadium's incredible. Training grounds, like, nice out, place out to work, well. right? Unbelievable, yeah. like so spoiled. And then, um, obviously, the managers come in and, um, yeah, just obviously wants to play attacking football, wants to have possession. Mm. Uh, and, yeah, he's been brilliant. You know, such a, like, big breath of fresh air, really. And, you know, for me, obviously, I'd watched a lot of him at Celtic and how the team was playing there. And, um, how's yeah. he How's he changed the dressing room? You talked about the importance of the dressing room earlier. How's What's his impact, would you say, on that? On the on the team from a player's point of view inside the dressing room, he um, he very much like at the training ground and stuff leaves the changing room to kind of run itself. Oh, really? And then yeah, he's not overly involved in that side, but everything's just like I think he remembers what players like yeah. and dislike. Say like last year we didn't have a schedule at all, so you get a text at eight in the evening being like, "Well, our training's now in the afternoon tomorrow," and stuff like that. Whereas now, like, you've got the schedule, you know exactly what training is, short, sharp, you work hard, but you're out there for, like, hour and 20, hour 15. But from the second you get outside, it's, like, non-stop, mm. like, super high intensity. Whereas, and then obviously, I think, you know, to be fair, we've got no year at this year, so it means you can have a midweek day off or whatever. But... Um, is that yeah. a discipline that sort of extends to the behaviour of the team as well? Is he quite sort of strict timings, that kind of thing? Yeah, he's, like, the standard's high on everything, whether it's, you know, discipline, mm. like, being on time, like, he's on it on everything, but he's not really on your case. Mm. Like, he sees everything. Yeah. And if you're late, he won't necessarily <laughs> pull you up that time you're late, but if it becomes a recurrence, yeah. like, he sees everything, and then he'll get on you. It's not like the Eddie it. Howe, what was that one, the roulette? The wheel oh, of the fines wheel. and oh, that was Sean Dyche. Or was it Sean yeah. Dyche? Yeah, it's not that sort no, of. No, it's not like that. But <laughs> he he seems like from what I've heard from different players as well that the coaches do the coaching. Like he obviously tells them what he wants to work at, and that's evident in terms of the way that Spurs are playing now. But he takes more of a sort of a backseat approach, and then comes alive in and around the game, which I think is like a more of an old school. Mm. You know, like Sir Alex Ferguson, mm. Harry was like that, where. Yeah. It kind of works because if you hear the same voice maybe 
the, every day, the same week, the same sort of season, it sometimes can get a bit monotonous. Whereas it seems to be working, especially here. Yeah, definitely. Like I've had it before, like you say, where you have a manager who takes every session, every team meeting, yeah. and like eventually lads start like switching off a little bit mm. or more. And so, then, yeah. um, <clears throat> but no, like with Ange, like he's very much, I'll let the coaches take the sessions on the pitch. But he's always out there, like watches everything, sees everything. You know, like you'll see if a player's slacking or there's a dip in quality or whatever. So he's always there watching. And like I say, he sees everything. And then, but yeah, I think he then, you know, match time minus one or pre-game, yeah. he'll step in and start talking. And he's the most incredible talker yeah. I've ever heard. Like it's... Like, you could be a motivational speaker. Like, oh, really? It's, like, yeah. it's unbelievable. Is it really? And you yeah. just see, like, you look around the dressing room and you can just see all the lads just like... Is like, there one thing he there. said that has particularly sort of struck you or stayed with you? I think the big thing when he first came in was, like, you need to be a family. Like, you need to think of each other as family. So, like, say, like, in a game, like, if something happens to him, he's like a family member whereas if, if you're strangers mm. you'd just be like I ah, can sort it out no. do you know what I mean so he wants everyone to be so close and so together and then you know he keeps coming back to that as in like that's kind of your standard like if you're all going to mm. press you press together and so he basically brought everyone into a little group yeah. and everyone's kind of bought into it and um, that's kind of been the big thing whereas it's easy at clubs for mm. like you to end up with you know, different groups and, and things like that. Whereas even like the non-playing ones, which is the toughest group to yeah. be in because they can kind of make or break you really. Yeah. Because yeah. if lads start sacking off training or not buying into the what the team needs, um, that can cause problems. But he's kind of brought everyone in together and then everyone's so team orientated. Yeah, and I suppose uh, Vicario's got the jersey at the minute. Like, how have you found found him? And and do you hope he gets injured? It's going to be about the first one. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> no, no, for a keeper, for a keeper's <laughs> mindset. I know you're all like that, that goalkeeper's union is. You know, you you you're doing everything for the number one spot, that like, to play well, and you're there for him. But there's got to be an element where you like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you you know, and also oh, no. I've spoke to him and he, he loves you as well oh that's nice <laughs> he does he's, nah, he said be, how good you've been with him nah to be fair he's, he came in in the summer and obviously mm. he settled in quick to be mm. fair like I think because his English is so good that's massively helped mm. him but it is hard when you come to a new club and I think you know from my side of it obviously I'm getting a bit older mm. and then you kind of You've been in so many different situations yourself, so then you can appreciate, oh, it's hard for this lad or that lad, or he might not be playing, or like you say, Vicario's just mm. coming to a new club. But no, he's been brilliant, obviously, mm. the way he's played. You know, he's uh, settled in really well. Perfect for the way the manager wants to play. Yeah. And um, But when they get a European night, you'll be <clears throat> stepping up, I'm assuming, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, giving the gaffer my... Uh, Highlight reel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he must have seen. No. He must not. He must be in his head. You can't, you can't <laughs> watch the YouTube highlights of of those nights and, and not think like. Well, so <laughs> if you're in the Champions League, you just slip him the old Barca yeah. tape underneath. There it is. <laughs> Do you think the gaffer is sat in the office watching Fraser Foster highlights 100%. on YouTube? Do you not think he, he must do? Nah. To be fair, he'll know a bit from being assaulted. Hopefully, yeah, of course. <laughs> mm. Nah, but obviously, like he sees you train and well, sees me train and. Hopefully he takes something mm. <laughs> decent. But no, nah, obviously he's like, Vic's done really well. Then. Yeah. Just flying and that's the nature of the position, do you know mm. what I mean? Like, whoever's playing well holds the jersey and mm. like, you don't wish injury on anyone. But mm. you just hope that at some, you get, some you point you're going to play some games, play, do you yeah, know what I mean? Course. Yeah, and in this day and age, there's so many games, competitions mm. and, you know, Spurs are mm. on the way up. So there will be, you know, opportunities for, for you to play. And I suppose it's that mentality, like... You just gotta be ready, haven't you? When it comes yeah, to that's things. that's the hardest thing. Like we touched on before, I think you know, for the group of lads who aren't playing, you have to be so kind of selfless, and you've mm. got to really put the team first. And I think some people can look from the outside and be like, "Oh, it's a it's a nice mm. job just sitting there mm. getting paid," but you, like you would have both had it where you're not playing, yeah. and how hard it is to 
keep going at it 100 yeah. percent um but yeah you've just got to train well and be a good guy and then be ready yeah what, so you talk about being ready what is your view because there's a few teams that do it at the moment arsenal's one of them brighton as well in terms of just they see whatever keepers fit for that game as a goalkeeper because mm. it's always been seen in the press you know like ex-players like but no i've not heard a keeper really say it whereas uh, you know you need to get into a momentum and <clears throat> rhythm but you wouldn't have liked to have just you know been in one game and not knowing when you'd just come out and come back in surely especially yeah, between I the think, six which I think is the hardest one mentally wise yeah I think that's just so hard to do is to like just come in for a game in and, and out. Then you're out and then and then you need that for me I think even though it affects the team I think you need that kind of stability mm. and you need those relationships with the back four yeah and I think it's so hard especially then if you're coming in for a game where you almost feel like, oh, I need to do really well. Yeah. Mm. You almost need to go chase yeah. it or you make a mistake in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that might change, hard, sorry, that might change yeah. you coming for a cross or, you know, they said that you got to do something out of the ordinary maybe that you wouldn't normally yeah. do. Yeah, you probably just think more. Try whereas if you're hard. in a run of games, you just slip into autopilot mm. and get on with it. Yeah, yeah. Know? Well, obviously, like we've had Aaron Ramsdale on the pod. Obviously, he's going through it at the moment as well. Like we always kind of, because he's been on the pod, he's like one of our boys. Yeah, we, you know? <laughs> we always push for him. You're in the circle. <laughs> well, Fraser, don't push worry. You in, mate. Yeah, You'll be out in Crouch Fest with Till Vicario <laughs> comes on. <laughs> <laughs> on that, we'll though, be we'll be, uh, we'll be on, badging for you on the sort of um, <laughs> rotating keepers. I think the thing that really strikes me with that uh, with the obvious situation is um, the camera on the bench watching the reaction. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so like the goalie <laughs> reaction, Poor. and that's what's kind uh, of come from this this notion that you can you know or, or supposedly rotate the goalkeeper well, we all, we all like that drama, can't we, yeah. be that's not a what's your take on that oh, it's, it's hard isn't it I mean I mean you're looking at the Arsenal one really there but it's just it's so hard because then it kind of creates a story and then it just runs you know like yeah. but it is so hard I think in that situation because you just have to sit there with your poker face mm. and be like I don't know. Yeah. Because yeah, it's yeah. so hard mentally, I think, as well, given the situation or whatever. I think you've got a bit of a rubbish poker face, by the way, because you, you're quite smiley. You oh. sort of like, you can see. <laughs> I you think you'd struggle on the bench. <laughs> <though. laughs> he pulls, like, pulls off a well reading, he pans to his hat. <laughs> Fraser, I know you're a busy man, but we uh, are big fans of uh, these 11s at the moment. Um, you know, we've had the Wolves ground staff got in touch with the groundsman 11 recently. Um, you know, we've had a uh, various different 11s. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Ben Mee got uh, caught up in a. Uh, ben Mee's been caught up in a few of them. He got caught up in a. Um, when he was on the pods. Yeah, there was an 11 there, wasn't that? Wasn't that just a cock 11 or something? <laughs> it was, like, that was a, yeah, it was a cock 11. Yeah, yeah. a tricky mm. one there. <laughs> yeah, it was tricky, wasn't it? Like, oh, that, that was a vagina 11, that was one. Was it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's the one he got caught up in. I'm not, not going to go too heavy on you. This is an Elton John 11. Okay. All right, so in goal. Who sent this in? Has uh, this been sent in? This has been sent in from Paul. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, nice. Right. Uh, in goal, don't go breaking Joe Hart. <laughs> uh, uh, in defence, don't let the sun go down on Ben Me. <laughs> that can't be beaten. <laughs> don't let the sun go down on Ben Me. Uh, your Rigobert song. Yeah, your song, yeah, yeah. obviously, yeah. your Rigobert song. Are you Carl ready for love? That is good. That's good. <laughs> Unreal. Um, this is good. Zat, Saturday nights, all right. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Zat, Zat night. Uh, mm. M Ray candle in the wind. <laughs> Oh, I think they could have done better than that. Emre Chan Chandle in the wind. What about candle in the wind us? Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> candle in the wind us. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's What's good. up with you today? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Mind you, I don't mind Emre Chandle in the wind. No, it surely. is. Good, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Book a yayo sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> Book a yayo sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> Sacrifice as a belter. Hold me closer, tiny Hamza Chowdhury. Yeah. Uh, Benny and the Jets. Benny McCarthy and the Jets. Uh, Daniel, obviously. For storage. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Rocket. Rocket Manuel Pellegrini. <laughs> There's loads that could be Rocket Mana as well, couldn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's so many yeah. you could do. Rocket Man United. 
Don't they great? <laughs> Did that. Oh, Elton like John 11. <laughs> any more for any more? Well, fantastic. No, that was <laughs> it, really. Uh, ben Me and the Jets. That ben I suppose Jets. you could feature. Um, I'm just trying to think <clears> if there's any others. Sacrifices of <laughs> the Tony Dancer. That could have been one. Tony Dancer. Mm. Ivan Tony Dancer. Mm. Yeah. Any more phrase? You got anything? No, I'm no. struggling on this one. You'll be thinking about it though <coughs> on the drive, won't you? <laughs> Fraser to the people. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Paul we'll smashed it, man. Yeah, Paul smashed it there. Yeah. Oh, but listen, um, absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast. Yeah, honestly, mm. you know what? Bizarrely, our paths haven't crossed that that much. Oh, no. Like, but from everyone I've heard talk about you um, I have to say they're all, tr all true because you're a top man <laughs> I mean it I don't know what you're laughing at I'm being serious um, oh, I don't know who you're no, to. Absolute, absolute pleasure oh, you, thank you. No, top man, right? thanks for having me well that was great uh, Fraser Full Start he was a uh, top man he? great guy really? I didn't realise that injury was that bad yeah his knee that sounded bad done well to come back from done that. well to come back yeah, yeah. Nice and you, absolute You're unit by the way as well big <laughs> big yeah and it, as always when we get these people on i find that i'm then way more interested in what they're up to like mm. I, you know obviously mm. had a passing interest before suddenly now i'm really invested in that guy getting to see european football again yeah, mm. uh, yeah. where are we with the neil warnock musical Okay, no, right. Is. This is really exciting. So we talked about Neil Warnock, the musical. Um, <laughs> if you're new to this podcast... Neil Warnock, the musical. Crazy. Isn't it? <laughs> crazy. It's, the first uh, one was brilliant, though, wasn't it? It was good. We, we had Neil Warnock on, uh, on the pod and we floated the idea of creating a musical about Neil Warnock just yeah. because we learned that he's a fan of musicals. The night before he went to the, uh, came on the podcast, he'd been to Jersey Boys. Um I'm really, really keen that we do this, by the way. You I don't are, want this to be are. one of these things that we just say and mm. don't do. I'm thinking the Edinburgh Fringe, a tiny venue, because, you know, the venues can be all different sizes. Mm. They're a tiny venue. And um, and even if it's like a one-person show, Neil Warnock, the musical, mm. we get the posters made, we do everything. We said we said there was a another verse to this. Have, so, we, have we got that? So someone very kindly, and we've been... As always, we we ask for your creativity to make these things happen. Um, someone sent in a version of the Greatest Showman song, "This Is Me," brilliant, but changed it to "This Is Neil," <laughs> and we played the first verse and chorus of that, and it went down an absolute, absolute storm. storm. Yeah, absolute storm. I've got the second. I can't wait. Half of this have you, song. Have you listened to it? No. Brilliant. Just like to shout out Tony here, who yeah. mm. has great work, Tony, yeah. writ written and performed this. Well, here we go. To know. My marking is easy. Are you with me? This is Neil. Another year with the money on my squad. A decent keeper. Defense, but my strikers were a fraud. <laughs> she was dreaming of Butterfield, reaching for the goal. Yeah, he scored free. Yeah, took the match ball home. I won't home. let a corner go via us. Can you not get to pick your man up? For we are glorious. <laughs> Kevin Musket's gonna bring you down. <laughs> If you pass to a Dell, it's 50 pounds. It's not jazz, it's revenge. Are you with me? This is Neil. Fuck off, Pinocchio. With the blaze blue birds, or white and more. Wow. My marking is easy. Are you with me? This is Neil. It's actually really catchy, isn't it? Yeah. This is Neil. And I know he's not a sewer rat. That's insulting sewer rats. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Kevin Muscat's gonna bring you down. <laughs> he's so good. If you pass to Adele, it's 50 pounds. <laughs> he's good. 
It's not chess, it's revenge. Are you with me? This is Neil. I can actually visualise that in the theatre. Like, this is a Neil. Stand at the uh, end. This is Neil. Yeah. I don't even care if the audience is like 10 people, 20 people, something like that. Just make it super small. This is Neil, the musical. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Love it. Super. Lads, do you remember we were talking on the podcast about um, people who pull a sickie, but then are mm. spotted at major sporting events? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get caught, basically. Yeah. And, and we asked for people's stories. We've had a few sent in. This is a good one. This is from 17-year-old Charlie. Says, uh, hi lads, massive fan of the pod. When I was in year nine of high school, I told school that I was sick and headed down to Wembley to watch the Euro semi-final, England-Denmark. All is fine until the corner just before Harry Kane's penalty when the camera pans onto the crowd and zooms in on me chanting. I get a message from my tutor with a picture of me on his TV. <laughs> and thankfully he saw the funny side. Oh, brilliant. Keep out the good work. Superb. Isn't that great? The chances of that. Yeah. Of the whole stadium. On telly. If you guys are ill, genuinely ill yeah. for a game, yeah. who do you phone for that? Do you phone the, the doc manager? Doc no, doctor. You phone the, you phone the actual club doctor, doctor, the club yeah. doctor? Yeah. club doctor. So have you ever put on the sick voice? Quite or? often, they, the no. thing is, with like, they, they, quite, they, quite, they quite often come round to the house, don't they? Yeah. So if you're sick and you can't come in, they'll come round to the house. What to check? Just make sure you're all right. Stop check, it. Check, stroke yeah. check, yeah. Or if the, you could say, can I nip to the training ground to pick up some... Medication. Mm. They'll leave it at uh, the front. She's gone in. Says, "What's your sick voice?" <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for this. Why? We need a scenario. Well, I think with these um, to kind of help it along. Is it? Well, what about we're all going to um, the football, okay. and uh, you're make it. you you you're supposed to come into work, but you want to go and watch the match. What are you going to say? I'm the boss. Go. Hello, Stephen? Ah, uh, boss. <laughs> no, you see again. <laughs> Not going to get away with that. Sid, you're you're getting sacked. thing you're getting is, sacked. if you're going to the football as well, your mates are around you, they're just, you've got one chance to put the I call in. One chance. You've, you've only one got chance. one chance. If you laugh, you've fucked it for you everyone. fucked it, mate. Don't put me in this uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel rough. <laughs> okay. All right, you re tell us when you're ready to make the call. I'm going to laugh. Oh. I'm going to laugh. Well, no, I'm tell us when you're ready to make the call because you, you've got to make this call. <laughs> <It's so> <laughs> you're going to ruin it for everyone if you don't right, come. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you mean come in? <laughs> All right, go. Hi, Stephen. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't. I can't. Attempt. I'm laughing. A sick voice. <laughs> Uh, right, Chris, what's up? My boss can't come in today. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> what's up? The world's falling out my ass. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I can't come in today. I'll see you later. You, you sure you're not? Oh, I just hung over. I've hung oh, up my hung up already. That was good. See, what you got to do is just get it in there. Get it in. I have an illness that they can't challenge. You know, mm. the world's coming out of my ass. <laughs> also, you, if that was the case, you wouldn't need to deploy the sick voice, really, would you? You should just confidently say, the world is falling out of my ass. <laughs> 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 anyway, keep sending us these stories. Uh, anyway. Some, some good ones we Yeah, getting. enjoyed that. All right, guys. Well, enjoyed that. Fraser Four Star, awesome. Um, yep. Love. Keep sending uh, Chris your... Um, mm. On Instagram, bit of love. He's Character really enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, it's really really good, really good for him. It's good yeah. for your your uh, self esteem. Mm. Uh, yeah, so you seem a bit perkier. Mm. She's, you really well, like she's, she's, bold she's, in here, didn't you? She's punching. She's <laughs> 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 All right, jump on, guys. Jump on. Right, we've had a massive push on subscribers this year. We're up to over a hundred thousand, but we want to. We want more, and that's down to you. So if you haven't hit subscribe yet, but you still like this podcast, hit now, otherwise you're a Carl.